Hello everyone. So my name is Mihai Karabash and today I'm going to present to you an overview of all the Beehive projects uh, developed in University College of Bucharest. So um, about me, a little, a little things about me. I'm a senior professor from this year at the University of Politica Bucharest. So I finished my PhD from the last time I, I, speak, I spoke here. And meanwhile, they had a new post in my university and I managed to get the assistant professor from October 2017. Um, unfortunately, I have a small amount of time to code, but I had students to coordinate in order to work at this project. I'm also, let's say, I'm still teaching the systems in uh, teaching assistant in operating systems, system architecture, and networks. I'll, I will start um, taking uh, actually presenting courses at these subjects from the next year. This is a regulation in our country. Um, about the BSD world, so first time I worked in BSD was the Dragonfly BSD, the scheduler, in 2012, and in 2013 I started working on virtualization on vKernels. Uh, the vKernels are something like jails, uh, they were doing em emulation in order to protect uh, the vKernels from the host, not, not do any nasty things, and they wanted to um, drop the emulation part of the page tables and go to a EPD, extended page table from Intel, the virtualization future. Uh, in 2014, I started working at Beehive, instruction caching, and 2016, uh, sorry, uh, 15 and 16, supporting uh, Beehive R. Uh, after that, I didn't do much coding, I only coded Beehive for this in the university. In the university. Um, so, Beehive through diploma and master project, I found this a very good way in involving students working on on FreeBSD and Beehive. A lot of work has been done, unfortunately none of it is committed yet. So there are a lot of projects, a lot of patches that are waiting for review to be brought in. Um, so we have the instruction caching I worked on, we have a couple of emulated devices, uh, also we have ports from RV7 and the new one, RV8, I'll present, I'll to present today. Also, we enabled virtual devices in RV7, and the last is behind the save store mechanism, something like uh, the, the open BSD, uh, pause and unpause, same thing, and we want to enable basically live migration with this. I will pass to each of the project, presenting the current status report, the current problems, uh, and also, uh, three of my students are here to present uh, Beehive RV8, something about Beehive RV8, what are devices and the same instrument methods. Uh, also, for ease of tracking, we switched from SVN to Git. We created a GitHub group, uh, FreeBSD UPB, uh, where, where uh, basically it's a mirror of the FreeBSD repo and also we created the branches for each repo. So every, every work we are currently doing is in there. It's easy to rebase and uh, create patches. Okay, instruction caching is an old project. Uh, and we didn't commit yet. I talked with Twitter. Uh, this is not going to be brought in because we don't see uh, very much improvement by caching the uh, um, the instruction we emulated. This will be seen when using nested virtualization. We don't have currently support for this in B5 and this is basically waiting. Uh, emulated devices. Here are three important devices. Uh, they were done by Alex Tacker um, as his uh, master project and also he participated in one Google Summer of Code in one year. It was coordinated by Peter and me. The current status. None of them are none of them are yet committed. The AD audio. I talked yesterday with Peter. He tested this driver on multiple platforms. It's working okay. No bugs were found, but it has a problem with caps, uh, capsicum. 
Uh, unfortunately, it needs to open and close the, file the audio file descriptor while running, and this is not compatible with the Epsicom um, mechanisms, let's say. He's still thinking how to integrate this in Beehive. Yes? So, if you would look into the computer, uh, there is So if you would look into the fabricator, there is a service for Casper to handle the files, so maybe this will help you with that? Uh, yes, probably. Uh, I didn't work, so uh, basically these drivers, okay, th these are functioning and Peter said, okay, I'll bring them in, so this somehow is in Peter Peter's work. Okay. Um, I will point them, I'll ask you later where to look at. Okay, or you can... Uh, send me some review part or whatever and I can just find it out. There. Okay, okay. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, further we have the uh, NE2000 which was waiting last year for the NetMap backend. Uh, Peter had no updates and he said he will probably bring in this driver as it is. Because it's an old driver and it was uh, built in order to be able to put very old systems on Beehive. We don't have to have any performance or something like this, uh, any performance uh, outcomes from this. And the last one is ATA this controller animation that needs to be working also, uh, needs to be working to be integrated with the other uh, emulation controllers in Beehive, also Peter said that the person uh, in charge for this didn't do any updates. So all of, all of these basically were, were written, were tested, they are working, but aren't integrated in a mainline Beehive. Further, Beehive on Beehive Army 7, it was basically started by me, uh, and I engaged two of my students, uh, Nikolai Alex Ivan, which uh, he is not here, um, and Darius Mihai, who is here and will present you the Vertile project. It was coordinated by Peter Grethen. It was done in internal development UBB from 2016 and in Google Cloud 2015. Uh, it's a uh, GitHub link, it's on FreeBSD UBB dash, uh, dash FreeBSD dash 3 dash project dash Beehive Arm. And the current status, pro uh, let's say the current uh, progress. From the last year, we managed to virtualize the to finish the virtualization of the interrupt controller. It had it had a lot of components, and also we virtualized the timer for a VM. Currently, we can fully boot a functional FBSD VM, and we have a console in there. Uh, as platforms, we use the emulator from uh, fast models. We emulated the Cortex A15, and also we managed to boot on a QB2. More technical details about the virtualization of the interrupt controller will be on Sunday, I guess it is the second presentation, uh, on the 11th of March at AGIBSDCon. And the time of virtualization was meant for BSDCAN, but unfortunately it was re rejected and won't be presented there. Okay, further we have another port on RV8, 64 bits. Uh, Alexander said really did uh, this port. Uh, it was coordinated by me. It was done last year in 2011. You have there the, the link to the uh, GitHub project. You can get it and compile it. It was sponsored by PBSD Foundation in form of a scholarship to our university. Thank you very much, uh, Deb, Ed, and Sabine for making this possible from the PBSD Foundation. Uh, Alex Elisei is a fourth year bachelor student. He is working on this as his diploma project uh, and representing the current status report from RV8. Only a few words. The extended presentation will be on Sunday. So, Alex, can you come and please? Should we switch? Okay, we use that. As a quick side note, thank you for your work uh, as the representative from the FreeBSD Foundation. We, uh, we like the uh, work that you've been doing and the great collaboration we have and we hope that we will continue this good collaboration. Yep, yep. So I, I received an approval from Deb and Ed last week uh, on uh, continuing RV8. Uh, we, you will see that we don't have, uh, we, we still don't have an interrupt controller virtualized. We'll do this until uh, the end of June. We'll be able to also put a guest until the concert. 
So I'll, I'll let Alex present his, himself and speak, and speak uh, about this project. Uh, hello, my name is Alex, and I'm going to give a short description on my work on Beehive Arm 64. Uh, Beehive Arm 64 is the name of the port uh, for Beehive on the Arm V8 architecture. Uh, this is the current status of the project. Uh, Beehive Arm 64 is based on Beehive for Arm uh, version, uh, version 7, and on the FreeBSD current code base uh, from July 2017. I have de developed Beehive Arm 64 using the Foundation Platform Emulator for ARM V8. This was created by ARM. And I'm able to create a virtual machine with only one virtual CPU. Uh, the guest uh, is able to boot, to start the booting process, and is able to print messages with standard output. Uh, the, the guest will terminate the boot process when it tries to initialize, uh, to initialize the interrupt controller. And that is because I haven't yet implemented interrupt controller virtualization. Uh, I plan to do this in the next stage of the project. I received a uh, scholarship. Uh, I received news of uh, scholarship a few weeks ago for, to continue on the project. Uh, and this is the general hypervisor architecture on the RV platform. Uh, all RV CPUs have two execution modes. ARM calls uh, these execution modes exception levels or EL for short. Uh, the kernel runs, runs in exception level uh, level one on RV8 because uh, uh, the code running in this exception level it has full control over the hardware. Uh, as you can see from the image, both the guest and the host, uh, the guest and the host kernels run in exception level one. In order to make uh, the host be able to control the guest. I have used a third exception level, exception level 2. This exception level is an optional architecture uh, extension to ARM V8, and Beehive ARM64 requires this uh, optional uh, exception level in order to work. So how, how does this work? When uh, the guest is running, I can configure exception level 2 to trap all privilege instructions that the guest is trying to execute. Uh, when, when, when one such instruction is, uh, is trapped, I switch execution to the host and the host will be able to do emulation on behalf of the guest. Uh, when the host is running, I configure exception level 2 so that uh, no privilege instruction is trapped and the, ho the host is in full control over the hardware. I, I had to implement memory virtualization for Beehive on, on uh, uh, ARM64. Uh, on R64, the process from, uh, to go from a virtual address to a physical address is called stage 1 translation. Stage 1 translation uses a translation table to, to execute the process. Uh, both the guest and the host uh, use the same mechanism to go from a virtual address to a physical address. Only that uh, when the guest is running, I activate the next stage of, stage of translation, stage 2 translation, and this takes as an input the guest generated physical address and it outputs uh, an address in the physical memory. Uh, in this case, the guest generated physical address is called intermediate physical address or IPA. Uh, the stage 2 transition mechanism uh, also uses a translation table, but uh, this translation table is different than the translation table used by, by, FreeBSD, for, by the FreeBSD kernel when it, when it does uh, stage 1 translation. Uh, uh, the stage 2 uh, table is different because it has a uh, different structure. It is three levels deep instead of four. And uh, the actual entries in the tables are different. And this is why I have implemented a new type of translation table in the FreeBSD kernel. Uh, this uh, translation table type is only used by Beehive in order to do virtualization. Uh, and that's about it. That's my short summary of my work. I'm going to give more information about it. Uh, at my presentation at SABSD, Asia BSDCon on Sunday morning. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alex, for your sh short summary. Uh, further, we'll talk about what are devices for Mihai Barn. Uh, the author is Darius Mihai. It was coordinated by me in 2016. You have here 
uh, basically all the commits went directly to Beehive Arm because it was selected. It didn't, it didn't make sense to make another uh, branch. Uh, it is related to Beehive uh, especially. It was also sponsored by the BSD Foundation in form of a scholarship. Thank you again, Ed, Dev, and Sabine for making this possible. Um, and I'll let Darius uh, make a short support of this. Uh, he is a first year student and he's working at this as his um, master reports each semester. Uh, and will present the current um, status for Vortical devices. Basically, you will see that he almost uh, finished implementation and uh, we plan to extend the collaboration between the foundation and uh, the university by trying to uh, boot, for example, right now we have the water devices trying to boot Linux kernels uh, on ARM. Okay, please Darius, come and make a short start, start support of your project.
more information about this uh, will be on Sunday. But um, when um, I ported basically the implementation from ARM to x86, I encountered more technical issues that were not really related to the devices themselves. Um, and the code is <coughs> has very little changes. And there, I mean, I modified a lot of it in the beginning and now I'm trying to remove the changes because I deem them not useful in any way. Okay. That's about it. Thank you very much. Questions? Questions? Anything? So, um, more implementation details on Sunday about this. Um, further, we have the last project, Behive Save, uh, Save and Restore. Uh, basically, last year I presented you a short demo working on Intel CPUs. At Behive Can, I gave, I gave a presentation, an extensive presentation about this future. And I will let, uh, right now, Elena um, make a um, short summary of what she was working on. Uh, before that, so this project started as an internal project in uh, summer 2016, and it, it is ongoing. It has its own branch on the GitHub repo, and it was sponsored by Matthew Grooms in form of a scholarship. So he sponsored all of the students, Mihai Sigonsi and Flavius, who worked on, in, uh, on this project in 2016. Right now they left the university, they finished their master, and uh, they are at Google. Unfortunately, a lot of students after the master project uh, aren't entering the PhD and are going to the big, the big companies like Facebook, Google, they are hunting them. Um, so thank you, Matthew, for, uh, for making this possible. And uh, right now, I'll let Elena, which is a first year uh, master student in network security, to present the current status report of Behive Save Restore. So what, uh, what she was uh, working on until now. So please, Elena. Hello, uh, my name is Elena and I will uh, talk about uh, the 7 Restore uh, project I'm working on. Uh, first, I would like to show you how the save mechanism can be used. Uh, in order to make a snapshot for a running virtual machine, you use the behind uh, control tool with uh, the dash dash checkpoint option. In order to make a restore, uh, we can uh, use the behind uh, run uh, tool uh, with uh, the dash r option and specify the checkpoint file. For uh, this project, I uh, will present two contributions. The first one refers to the 7 restore uh, uh, state for uh, virtual devices. Um, we choose uh, virtual programmable interrupt controller, virtual programmable interval timer, vir virtual real-time uh, clock, and the virtual LCPA uh, power management timer. Uh, more uh, virtual devices were uh, already uh, saved and restored by my colleagues. The second contribution is um, uh, saving and restoring the uh, uh, CPU state for AMD CPUs. As Mihai said, uh, my colleagues uh, implemented this kind of future, but uh, for Intel CPUs. And, uh, uh, an AMD CPU save and restore uh, state was uh, needed. More uh, detailed uh, information I will present uh, um, on uh, Sunday on the Sunday uh, presentation. On our current uh, status, uh, we managed to save and restore the state for a virtual machine. And uh, we aim to do, the, to, uh, to do a live migration feature for Beehive. Now we are trying to uh, save a virtual machine on a device, on a system, and restore uh, that 
on another one from a checkpoint in order to um, implement the live migration feature. Thank you. Thank you, Lana. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you, Elena. Uh, so, these were the projects we are currently working on in the university. Um, some conclusions. So, last year, my slide, I, I was thinking, I was stating on my uh, last slide that there is a great potential in developing core code for B hybrid students. And the satisfaction is are from both perspectives, especially from the, uh, from, from them, Okay, so the satisfaction are from both perspective, perspectives, especially from on them because they are doing low-level programming. Uh, and it's hard to have results if you don't have ensure a minimal scholarship. After that, I, uh, I was appointed by Deb from the VBSD Foundation and I started work, working with her about uh, sponsorship options. And I led into projects after talking with Peter Graham and uh, so, what are the most ones that, that, that uh, most important projects that are missing, and no one will work on them in the next year, for example? And uh, I chose Word.io for RMB7 and RMB8 port. Uh, finance ongoing projects. All three of them ha has finance until the summer, with no problems, and probably will have finished them by then. And the personal perspective. We need to integrate our work in the main repo because it's very hard. It's very hard to keep up with all the changes. We have a very big code base, a lot of changes uh, right now. For behind RV7 is a pending review, and it's huge because it basically introduces in Beehive um, separation in arches. We are moving basically all the Beehive code in Beehive uh, dash x86 and creating Beehive ARM. Uh, directory and this move, this moving of the code was discussed with Peter, was approved by uh, verbal by him, but we need to get this in in the main line in order to get in the other projects. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'll answer them with no problem. Yes. So are you adding MIMD? Support to the Beehive code base because right now it's very AMD specific. Uh, sorry, I said, are you adding machine independent, machine dependent bifurcation of the code base for Beehive? Is that what you guys are doing uh, under the ARM branch? Uh, this is uh, so actually, uh, Beehive ARM was initially created like a separate folder, so we had, had a Beehive ARM folder, and when when pushing the first to uh, the, the, the first review. We received multiple comments from Ed, from Peter, that this is not the best approach, that, sh that we should wait. After that, they said, okay, let's create a multiple arch architecture. And then Darius uh, came and tried to create uh, some, inter some generic interfaces like KVM has and make the code, let's say, machine dependent independent. But when digging the code, he saw that a lot of the files in Beehive were x86 dependent. So all the interfaces had, had registers and so on. So there was not, not so much uh, work to do. So basically separate the files, uh, see what are the basic interfaces, um, and just put them in there. So right now in our repo, this is this separation. Okay. So this is what we were trying to do basically. Other questions? Don't be shy. Yes. So, uh, in one of the projects you mentioned that you are using the extension to ARM v64. Yes. Uh, my question is, is it a very popular extension or it's very... Like, what means extension? Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, is the virtualization extensions which are in the CPU specification. Okay. So, uh, okay. we, we are not using something that isn't in there. Okay, so, uh, so Alex referred to those extensions because they are referred in the CPU manual as extensions. Okay, thanks. Okay, so you, we are basically supporting ARMv8. Uh, 
there is a new CPU coming, RV8.1, uh, which basically uh, simplifies a little uh, the work on the Type 2 hypervisors. You don't need the uh, EL2 uh, level anymore. You can use the same approach as Intel and AMD. Other questions? Yes? What kind of use case or customer are using BI on our device? Uh, right now, there, there are a lot of um, servers that are coming up with RV8. So the, this, is, this is why FreeBSD was porting, ported on, on RV8, to be able to keep up with Linux, because uh, there are a few vendors that are providing um, low power servers with a lot of cores, RV8. Yeah. Here who buys this, this server? Who? who? Who buys this? Right now, it, it isn't, let's say, it's it's provided more like as a development box and because there are a lot of libraries that need, need, need needs to be, let's say, improved and so on. Because they are very low power, but their performance doesn't yet compare with x86. But there is a trend in this and we, we need to keep up because uh, otherwise we will be left uh, aside. Okay? okay. Uh, Linux is working on this, Windows is working on RV8 right now, they are working on this and we need to proactively work because this cannot be done in half a year, in one year, it, it is a lot of work. And we started this first with RV7, we knew that there isn't much use case with FreeBSD and RV7, but it was a first concept, a very important first concept. So for example, we worked one year and I don't know, we fully have uh, VM running and Alex managed to do this in three or four months because he had the proof of concept in there. Okay, um, and also for ARM v7 we could find some use cases on mobile phones if you run FreeBSD on mobile phones, for example. So in my PhD, I did um, uh, my PhD is on virtualization and embedded systems, and I have written a proprietary microkernel, and we were able to run. Uh, to end with in parallel on the same phone, giving different security perspective and so on. So there are some issues, some corner cases we can use. Someone can definitely use, but it, it, it needs a lot of work. Thank you for your question. Other questions? Thank you, Mihal. Thank you very much.